Mui. Welcome, sir. Mungode Allah. Tonight, all praise to God. Tonight, the power of God will work in your life. Anywhere you are on this ground, anywhere you are in our country, Nigeria, any country in Africa, beyond Africa, the Lord will work mightily in your life. What he has done for other people, he will do for you. He will turn your life around. He will answer every prayer. He will break every yoke. He will destroy the works of the devil. Father, we well, thank you tonight. We we'll bless your name because you are great, you are good. You are merciful, you are loving, and we know you cannot fail. We come to you because we know you promised us and your promises can never fail because you are not a man that you lie, neither the son of man that you repent. Everything you have said will come to pass. In the life of everyone here, in the life of everyone listening anywhere, everywhere, I pray that your mighty power will move unrestricted will move in an unprecedented manner and great will be the manifestation of your power in every life tonight confirm it O oh lord in jesus name we pray god bless you you can sit down tonight as we come in the presence of the lord and we come because of this supernatural vibration. And he still has the power. And his spirit is moving among us. Vibration in every form, every shape, in all its ramification will happen in your life. Vibration in your soul. Vibration in your spirit. Vibration in your body. Libration from all the chains that are bound you, even until that time, until this time, there will be total, complete, unrestrained, unlimited liberation in your life in Jesus' name. Tonight, we look at Luke chapter 7. And we're looking at verse 20. Luke chapter 7. Verse 20, there's a question at the end of that verse that John the Baptist had sent to the Lord Jesus Christ. He wanted to know, he said, Art thou he that shall come? Are you the one that shall come? Or do we look for another? We're expecting salvation. Are you the one that shall come to bring that salvation? Or do we look for another? We want deliverance. We want healing. We want total freedom from all the chains and all the evil things that bind us. Art thou he that shall come? We have been expecting. For years they were waiting. For centuries they were waiting. And now the question is coming from John Baptist, it says, and thou he that shall come, or do we look for another? The same question you should be asking today. You have a problem, you want that problem to be solved. You have incurable disease, and you want that incurable disease to be healed. You are asking the question, have I come to the final place where that solution will come? Is he Christ? The one to come and solve my problem, or do I look for another? You want to be saved. You want the burden of sin to be taken away from you. And all the chains that bound you, 
and everything that makes it impossible for you to live right, to walk right, to talk right, to ask him, is he Christ, the Savior, Christ, the Lord, Christ, the Redeemer, Christ, the Emancipator, Christ, the Healer, Christ, is he the one to come, to come and heal you? To come and save you. To come and deliver you. Or do we look for another? That's the question everybody is asking today. And the Lord then answered the question. He is the one. He is your savior. He is your healer. He is your deliverer. He is your emancipator. He is the one that will break every yoke and every power of the enemy out of your life, even tonight, in Jesus' name. Look at the answer in verse 21. In verse 21, and in that same hour, this same hour, when is your salvation? This same hour. When is your freedom? This same hour. And when is your emancipation and supernatural liberation? This same hour. Shout that out. This same hour. Healing. This same hour. Salvation. This same hour. Deliverance. This same hour. Mighty miracle, I can't hear you shout it out. The same hour. In that same hour, he cured many of their infirmities and plagues, and of evil spirits, and unto many that were blind, he gave their he gave sight. Remember, he was answering the question, Are thou he that shall come? Or do we look for another? And instead of just saying words, there was action. An action of miracle. An action of power. An action that turned their lives around. And in that same hour, in answer to that question, are you the one to come? Or do we look for another? In that same hour, he cured many of their infirmities and of their plagues, and of evil spirits, and unto many that were blind, he gave sight. Tonight, if you are blind, he'll give you sight. If you are deaf, he'll open your ears. If you are dumb, he'll loosen your tongues. If anything is swelling your body, any part of your body, he'll drive that swelling away in Jesus' name. You have elephantiasis, it'll make your feet to be normal. If you are lame, you rise up and walk. And any problem you have, are thou the man that shall come? Or do we look for another? There's no other one we're looking up to. Christ is a savior and healer. And he will do it in your life today in Jesus' name. In that same hour. He cured many of their infirmities and plagues and of evil spirits. And unto many, unto many, thank God you are among that many. I said you are part of that many. And the Lord will effect it in your life today in Jesus' name. Unto many that were blind, he gave sight. Verse 22, he then said, Then Jesus answering said unto them, Go your way and tell John what things ye have seen and heard. How that the blind see it will happen again. Amen. Jesus the same yesterday, today and forever. He said go tell John and he sent me to go and tell you that the blind will see. The lame walk. It said, go tell John that the lame walk. And he has told me to tell you tonight that if you are lame, guess what will happen? You'll rise up and walk. And then it says, the lepers are cleansed. He has sent me to tell you tonight, if there's leprosy in your body, that same Jesus, the same yesterday 
and today and forever you will cleanse you from that leprosy and the deaf hear look at that even the deaf they will hear and the dead are raised and the dead are raised anything that is dead in your body your kidney your liver anything will come alive tonight and then it says to the poor the gospel is preached and then it says in verse 23 and blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me shall not be offended in me how can anybody be offended at christ let me explain to you a woman came to christ and he said have mercy on me my daughter lies at home sick and is vexed tormented please come so that you can heal deliver her and jesus said it is not right to give the children's bread unto dogs and that could have offended that woman but she was not offended it's like she was he was calling her a sinner a dog a dirty person and yet she was not offended and that's why jesus said and blessed is he and blessed is she whosoever shall not be offended in me all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And when God calls you a sinner, it's not anything strange because that's all we were before we met Christ. And when God calls you a sinner, you are not offended. If you are not offended, he gives you salvation. He gives you forgiveness. Blessed is he and blessed is she whosoever. I will not be offended. I will not be offended. You will not be offended and you'll have forgiveness, you'll have freedom, and you will have uh, the salvation of the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. Blessed is he tonight, and blessed is she tonight, whosoever shall not be offended in Christ. Christ is the Savior. He came to save from sin. If he came to save from sin, he must tell you the truth that you are a sinner. And if you are not offended, lo and behold, salvation will come to you. If you are sick, and he says you are sick, and he diagnoses your problem, and your infirmity, and says, look at why this came to you, and then you are not offended, Praise the Lord. You say, yes, Lord, like that woman, you have said the truth. I am truly a dog. And Jesus said, great is your faith. And she was healed in that same, the daughter was healed in that same hour. This is your hour. Amen. This is your day. Amen. And whatever it is you have done, as you accept, and you trust, and you believe, and you rely on him without any kind of offense. Lo, miracle has come upon your life today in Jesus' name. As I said, I'm talking to you on total liberation. What kind of liberation are you having today? Total liberation. Complete liberation. Unlimited liberation from giant plagues and problems there's some problems like they're like giants they will bring down any man any woman and he says he comes to deliver and he comes to give us total freedom complete freedom complete vibration from giant plagues and problems the three things we're looking at number one number one the little transgressor that causes great destruction the little transgressor that causes great destruction you know some people uh, might say i'm not a big sinner i'm just a little sinner 
small sinner. And the things I do are very small. They are minimal. That's what the Lord is telling us. It's the little transgressor that brings, that causes the great destruction. Number two is the Lord's touch. How I rejoice with you tonight. The Lord will touch you. It'll touch you from the top of your head to the tip of your toe. At every part of your life, your spirit, your soul, and your body will receive the divine touch in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord's touch that cures great diseases. Already mentioned them to us, blind eyes being opened. The lame rising up and walking, the deaf and the dumb speaking and hearing, and every incurable disease, the Lord taking that away, He'll do it for you. What are you? I said He'll do it for you. And you'll be the recipient and the carrier of the miracle power of the Lord tonight in Jesus' name. Number three is the loyal trust. You trust him. And then you say, as I trust you, I'm going to be loyal to you. And that is the trust. The trust. Trusting in the Lord who saves. Trusting in the Lord who heals. Trusting in the Lord who delivers. Trusting in the Lord who sets free the loyal trust that confirms great deliverance. And the deliverance of the Lord will be confirmed in your life tonight. In my life tonight. In my life tonight. The deliverance of the Lord will be confirmed in Jesus' name. Number one. The little transgressor that causes great destruction. Transgressor. Everybody on earth carries that transgressor along with him, with her, everybody. The little transgressor. Who is that? What is that? What does he do? When does he do it? And how does he become? How does she become that little transgressor? And what kind of destruction? And what kind of devastation? And what kind of disease? And what kind of evil does that little transgressor do? Little transgressor. We're looking at James chapter 3. And I'm reading from verse 5. In James chapter 3 verse 5, even so, the tongue is a little member. Even so, the tongue is a little member. The tongue is that little transgressor and boasteth great things. Behold how great a matter, a little fire Kindleth. The little tongue is a little fire, and then it destroys great things. It says in verse 6, in verse 6 it says, and the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, our members, the feet, the hands, the ears, the eyes, and our five senses. And it says the tongue is a little member among our members that it defileth the whole body. That little tongue is the little transgressor that brings defilement to the whole body and brings destruction devastation, disease to every life. And it says, it set it set it on fire the course of nature. That's how bad, that's how terrible that little member 
that little transgressor in our body. That's how terrible it is. And then it says, and it is set on the fire of hell. Now, we need to diagnose the disease and the cause of the disease, and then uh, liberation will come. Let me hear you. Liberation will come. It will come in Jesus' name. I could show you the history of the children of Israel, all of them, as they went from Egypt to Canaan. The thing that always brought them to trouble was the little tongue. I can show you the story of any family. The things that scatters that family is that little tongue. I can show you a professional person that is climbing up the ladder of progress and success. And what brings many people down is that little tongue. I can show you people who have been hindered from great blessings in their lives and all their good desires, all their good aspirations were not fulfilled because of the little tongue. Now, if we do not detect, if we do not find out and fish out that little transgressor and then we receive a lot of blessings and that little transgressor is still there then we go out the little transgressor will reverse every blessing that we have got that's why we're pointing out the, uh, the culprit and we're pointing out the criminal and we're pointing out the transgressor tonight and as we bring that transgressor to the Lord, and the Lord turns around and changes everything about that transgressor, all my problems are over. All your problems are over. The Lord will do it in Jesus' name. I want you to think about any sin, any evil, any iniquity, any transgression, anything that you have done that you feel guilty about, the tongue has contributed. If anybody does that bad thing, the tongue contributes to that. If it goes that way, the tongue contributes to that. That's why that tongue is the little transgressor that nobody has been able to tame. Now, this tongue, the Bible uses some adjectives to qualify, to describe, to point out, and to detect this tongue. What's the adjective? Number one, proud. Number two, piercing. Number three, polluted. Number four, perverse. Number five, profane. Number six, poisoning. Number seven, pessimistic. You see, they raise the proud tongue. And the proud tongue lands us in trouble. In Psalm 12, reading from verse 3, it says, Psalm 12, verse 3, The Lord shall cut off all flattering leaves, and the tongue that speaketh proud things. That's the problem. The proud tongue, when the tongue is proud, it will then speak some things, bragging and boasting, exalting itself. The proud tongue, it says in verse 4, it says in verse 4, who have said with our tongue, we will prevail. Our leaves are our own, who is Lord over us. That's why we have trouble. That's why the judgment of God is on many. And that's why disease, destruction have been upon many lives. And when you bring that proud tongue to the Lord today, the Lord will forgive you. And the Lord will change the action and the activities and the utterances of that tongue. And your tongue will not be proud anymore. That's what we call salvation. When God brings a change, a change on our tongue, 
a change of what we browse, a change of what we look at, a change of the things that we do, we shouldn't do, a change in the things that we speak, we shouldn't speak. That's the forgiveness and the freedom, and that is the salvation. Number one, proud tongue. Number two, piercing tongue. It tells us in Psalm 54. In Psalm 54, it says from verse 3, it says, for strangers are risen up against me. The oppressors seek after my soul. They have not said God before them. Those oppressors, they don't think about God. They have not said God before them. And then in verse 4, it says in verse 4, Behold, God is my inner helper. I come to announce to you tonight, God is your helper. Yeah. It will help you. Out of the dungeon, anywhere you are, it will help you tonight in Jesus' name. The Lord is with them that uphold my soul. Look at verse 5. In verse 5, it shall reward evil to mine enemies. Cut them up in thy truth. Look at verse 7. In verse 7, for he hath delivered me out of all trouble, and mine eyes have seen his desire upon mine enemies. You see, those uh, people that have the piercing tongue, that's what they do. They pierce your life, and they pinch your life, and they make you say, they make you feel the pain. And if you have uh, such a piercing tongue yourself, that's what you use some people. When you criticize people, when you coach people down, and when uh, you bring pain uh, in their lives with your tongue. And because of that, that's why we get into trouble. That's why we lose a lot of our friends. I can't stay near him. Uh, I can't stay near her because the tongue is piercing. And today, the Lord will bring a change. I said the Lord will bring a change. And then uh, there is polluted tongue. All the polluted stories and the filing things, when you listen to them, they make your life dirty because their words pollute, their words corrupt, their words bring defiling things into your mind, into your memory. But the Lord will deliver you. Number four, there is the perverse tongue. It tells us in Isaiah. Chapter 59, reading from verse 1. I say chapter 59, reading from verse 1. It says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, neither that it cannot save, neither is ear heavy that it cannot hear. God answers prayer, but many times our tongues hinder the hand of the Lord from reaching us because our tongues are proud, our tongues are piercing, our tongues are polluted, our tongues are perverse. But tonight, that perversity in your tongue, the Lord will turn it around. The Lord will bring a complete change. And then, uh, since perverseness is gone and pollution is gone and the piercing character of the tongue is gone and the pride of the tongue is gone, then uh, solution will come easily to your life. Salvation will come easily to your life. There is repentance. There's turning away. From all that the tongues have done and have said and have uttered before. And when we turn and we turn from the past and we turn unto the Lord, behold, he will forgive. Behold, it will save. And then with that salvation, total redemption will come to your life. Look at that. It says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shutting that it cannot save, neither is ear heavy that it cannot hear. Then in verse 2, it says in verse 2, But your iniquities 
have separated between you and your God. Our sins form a barrier, a wall of demarcation between the holy God and the sinful man. So that as he wants to send blessing, there's a blockage, there's a barrier. And it says, it's our iniquities that have separated between us and our God. And your sins have hid the space from you that he cannot hear. That's why the first thing we do as we're coming to the Lord is that we turn away from our sins. We repent of our sins. And it is not a night's repentance, a one-day repentance, a temporary repentance. We say a permanent bye-bye to our sins. And then we say, Lord, Savior, I have come. I told, I did what you told me to do. Repent ye and believe the gospel. I've repented. I turn away from all my iniquities and my transgressions and my sins. And the Lord will forgive you. And the Lord will save you. And the Lord will change your life. Look at verse 3 there. Verse 3 says, For your hands are defiled with blood, and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies. Your tongue, your tongue, your tongue have muttered, have muttered perverseness. The perverse tongue. And then number five is yeah, the profane tongue. That's talking about Esau. You'll not be like Esau. I will not be like Esau. Say it for yourself. I will not be like Esau. He had a profane tongue. He said, what will the birthright do me? And because of that profanity, he lost the birthright. Some people say, what will the new birth do me? That's profane. What will salvation do me? That's profane. What will the ticket to heaven do to me? That is profane. The Lord comes to you and he says, I want you to be born again. I want to give you the new birth. The spirit of God coming into your life, turning everything around and washing you whiter than snow and your life becoming different. And say, I don't want that. What am I doing with the new birth? is healing and wanting. That's the profane tongue. And I pray that profanity of the tongue will be taken away from you. New life. New tongue. New language, new declaration, and what God says you need, He will give it to you, and you accept in Jesus' name. Now, number six is the poisoning tongue. That's the tongue that poisons the lives of other people. Look at Romans chapter 3, and I'm reading from verse 13. Romans chapter 3, verse 13. Their throat is an open sepulchre. Their tongues, they have used the seed of their tongues. The poison of asp, of a poisonous snake, is under their leaves. Their tongue poisons the lives of other people. Look at verse 17 there. Verse 17, the way of peace they have not known. Anywhere they come, they cause conflict. Anywhere they come, they cause, they cause commotion. Anywhere they come, they cause confusion. The way of peace, they have not known. And if the work is the business of their tongue, they can poison people's feeling and people's heart and people's joy, and people's progress, and they do that with their tongue. And that is why the Lord is saying, I want you to bring your tongue and your heart, because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. I want you to bring your heart and your tongue and everything unto me, and the Lord will cleanse you tonight. 
and the Lord will change your life tonight. And then, number seven, is the pessimistic tongue. The pessimistic tongue. I pray all that the Lord will cancel out of your life. Look at this man. It's in 2 Kings chapter 7, and I'm reading from verse 1. Then Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord, Tomorrow, about this time, shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel, and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. That was a great prophecy. A great prophecy is coming upon your life. A turn you around every bad evil thing that has devastated or destroyed your life everything will be removed tonight in jesus name Amen. the joy of the lord will be your strength total freedom total emancipation and total liberation the lord grant you tonight in jesus name they had been in famine poverty, penury for a long time. And now the prophet of God came and the Lord gave him the word. And he said, thus says the Lord. He didn't say, hear my opinion. He didn't say, hear what I think. He didn't say, hear my personal uh, encouragement. He said, thus says the Lord. Thus says the Lord, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord tonight, shall be saved. Thus says the Lord, whosoever will come to God in faith tonight will be healed. Thus says the Lord, every bad thing, every evil thing in your life, it will cancel tonight in Jesus' name. Look at this man. Look at him in verse 2. In verse 2, it says, Then a Lord on whose hand the king leaned and said, the man of God, here is the pessimistic uh, tongue. Behold, if the Lord will make windows in heaven, might this thing be? That's the pessimistic tongue. He didn't believe the promise of God and the prophecy from the Lord. And then look at the answer. It says, Behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes, but shall not eat thereof. Look at what happened to him. Because of the tongue. That's why we come to the Lord tonight and we say, Lord, now I know the little transgressor that causes great destruction. And I bring that to you. And I want you to forgive my past and to change and turn around my life. And then a new thing will begin. I said a new thing will begin. He'll do it in your life in Jesus' name. What will the Lord do? What will the Lord do? The Lord will touch you. He'll touch your heart. He'll touch your spirit. He'll touch your tongue. And then it will turn everything around. You'll be a new creature in Christ in Jesus' name. Can you say you are saved if you still have a proud tongue, a piercing tongue, a polluted tongue, a perverse tongue, a profane tongue, a poisoning tongue, a pessimistic tongue? That's why we come to the Lord. That's why the Lord is inviting us. He says, come and you will change everything in your personality he'll change everything through and through within and without in your heart in your tongue in jesus name god has heard your amen, amen. he will do it your expectation will not be disappointed look at point number two here point number two is the lord's touch that kills great diseases the Lord's touch look at Matthew chapter 8 reading from verse 2 Matthew chapter 8 reading from verse 
2. It tells us in verse 2, Behold, there came a leper. A leper was an incurable person. Even till today, that's why they'll make a colony for the lepers. They, behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. He came to the Lord. That means he believed in the Lord. And he said, if you're willing, I know you can do it. The Lord can do it in your life tonight. And then it says, it will worship him. He said, I'm totally, completely giving unto the Lord. And he worshiped him. And he said, if thou wilt, if thou wilt, if you want to, he wants to. In your life tonight, he wants to forgive. In your life tonight, he wants to heal. In your life tonight, he wants to save. In your life tonight, it is his will that you should be saved. Because God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. That's why he sent Christ. The man was a leper. He didn't know that God was willing. And then he said, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. You can turn my life around. You can change me. You can convert me. And you can purge and purify me that my life will become totally different. Tonight is your night. That same hour, that same moment, the hand of the Lord touched him and everything was all right. And this same moment and this same hour, the hand of the Lord will touch you and everything in your life. I'm talking to somebody now. Everything in your life, I'm talking to somebody there. Everything in your life will become all right in Jesus' name. Look at verse 3. Verse 3 says, And Jesus put forth a sand and touched him. That's the solution. For you tonight, that's the solution. Jesus put forth a sand and touched him. He'll put forth a sand in your life today. He will touch you. Amen. Heavenly hand will touch you. The healing hand will touch you. And the mighty hand of the Lord will touch you. The saving hand of the Lord will touch you. He put forth a sand and he touched him. Anybody waiting for the touch there tonight? Anybody waiting for the touch there tonight? You come unto him. You worship him. You don't reserve anything. You say, all my heart, all my soul, all my mind, I come unto you. And I surrender. And I submit myself completely unto you. And he called him Lord. And you make him the Lord of your life. He will touch you tonight. And then we are told, he touched him, saying, I will. I will that you are saved. I will that you are cleansed. I will that you are transformed. I will that your life does not remain the way it was. I will be thou clean. Be thou saved. Be thou forgiven. Be thou delivered. Be thou set free. It will happen. And immediately, his leprosy was cleansed. Immediately. Instantaneously. That very moment, the leprosy was cleansed. All the things that has come upon you, all the devastation, all the diseases, all the destruction that has come upon your life tonight, immediately the Lord will deliver you. Look at point number three there. Point number three is the loyal trust. The loyal trust that confirms the great deliverance. The loyal trust. You are loyal no more to the devil. You are loyal no more to your flesh. You are loyal no more to a secret cult. 
you are loyal no more to a gang you are loyal no, no more to a corrupt society you turn around and with your mouth you had declared you were going to be loyal to that gang but they're ruining your life and with your tongue you have made covenant with satan with the devil that you'll be loyal to him and your tongue has brought you into great problem but now you turn around you say satan is not my creator is Satan your creator? Gang, the gang is not my creator. Is the gang your creator? That society, corrupt society, is not my creator. A day your creator. And then you remember the Lord. You remember your creator. You say, with my tongue, I ignorantly promised and covenanted with all those agents of Satan that I'll be for them forever, but now I withdraw my loyalty from Satan. Can I hear you? Yeah. I withdraw my loyalty from that gang. I withdraw my loyalty from uh, association, the association of criminals. I withdraw my loyalty from the people that bring confusion, corruption, and devastation, destruction in my life. Now, I bring my loyalty to Jesus. Anybody there? Loyalty to Jesus. Loyalty to our Creator. Loyalty to our Redeemer. And then as you do that and you come with loyal trust, every problem will be over. Yeah. All that Satan had done, when you made covenant through the agents of Satan, everything will be cancelled in your life. Tonight, I welcome you to the peace of God. I welcome you to the joy of salvation. I welcome you to the total supernatural liberation coming upon your life tonight in Jesus' name. As you trust him, as you believe him, it will take away all the pressure and all the devastation of the devil and of sickness, disease out of your life in Jesus' name. Look at Mark, Mark chapter 16. In Mark chapter 16, reading from verse 15, it says, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And then it tells us in verse 16, He that believeth, those are the people that trust, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not, what does that mean? The one that says, uh -uh, I don't want to give my loyalty to Christ. I don't want to trust in Christ. I don't want to lean on Christ. I don't want to believe on Christ. He that believeth not shall be damned. That's not you. I say that's not you. But you come and then you believe on the Lord. You say, Lord, here am I. I trust in you today and I'll be loyal by your grace. I'll be totally dependent upon you. I will lean on you. I trust you. I believe you. I hand over the rest of my life unto you. Salvation immediately will come to you. And then it says in verse 17, it says, And these signs shall follow them that believe. These signs shall follow them that believe. You'll carry your miracle home today. Because as you trust and as you believe, as you come to the Lord and you say there's total separation between you and Satan, total separation between you and that gang, total separation between you and the secret call, total separation between you and all the things you were relying on before, the waistband you throw away and the juju you throw away, your faith is now only in Christ. Signs will follow you. Miracles will follow you. 
healing will follow you. This sign shall follow them that believe. Those that believe here, the people who believe in every location, the people who believe in every country, and they believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, they know the price of their salvation had been fully paid on the cross of Calvary. And now all they need to do is come away from all those things of the past and come to the Lord and salvation will be yours. And then it says in my name, they shall cast out devils. Once you disown the devil and you remove your loyalty away from the devil and you say, no, I'm not following you anymore. No, I'm not going to honor that evil covenant anymore. Then uh, the power of Satan will be broken out of your life. They shall speak with new tongues. They will not be speaking with the tongue of cursing, the, the tongue of abusive language, and the tongue that is proud. And the tongue that is perverse, they will not be speaking with tongues that is polluted anymore. They will not be speaking with the tongue that is pessimistic anymore. A new tongue, a chain tongue, and a renewed language, they will speak with new tongues. I pronounce it upon your life in Jesus' name. And then in verse 18, it says, They shall take off serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. You will not die before your time. You will not die another person's death. All you need to do is come to Christ, is have your loyal trust in Christ, and then you will live your life to the full. Nothing will cut short your life. And then it says, And they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. The hand of the Lord will touch you, and you will recover. I said you'll recover. Your blind eyes will open. Your deaf ears will open. Your dumb tongues will be loosed. And the swelling in that body, whatever is packed there, everything will vanish away. Miracle of healing will come to you in Jesus' name. Here is what the Lord, the agenda, the program, the promise, the prophecy that God has for us. Here is the provision that he has made for us. And he's now saying, whosoever, whosoever, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord, shall be saved, shall be forgiven, shall be healed, shall be delivered, and shall have total freedom, total liberation. And it is now, the ball is now in your court. For you to say, yes, Lord, I am the man. Yes, Lord, I am the woman. And I know that today, this very hour, will bring liberation, will bring freedom, will bring emancipation, will bring salvation, will bring healing to my life. This very hour, be it unto you according to your faith. It's bowed and eyes closed. It's bowed and eyes closed. You're telling the Lord now, you're saying, I know now from the word of God, the genesis and the origin and the source of my problem. My tongue, the little transgressor, has caused great destruction in my life. But now I come to Christ and I've considered it. I want to abandon all those things of the past that brought all these terrible things on me. And I want to have total trust, complete trust, loyal trust in Christ my Savior. Where are you? You raise up your hand. You're turning away from that corrupting society. You're turning away from all those things that have destroyed your life. You're turning away from how you have used your tongue, how you have used the members of your body to do something wrong. You say, Lord, I come now. Wherever you are, you raise up your hand. God bless you there. God bless you.
bless you there. Wonderful. If you are raising up your hand, you will stand up. Over the radio, you can do this too. And over the television, you can do this too. In the social media, you can do this too. And you can say, I now understand and wholeheartedly, spirit, soul, and body, I bring myself unto the Lord. And I, I cut off from all those past things that brought destruction in my life. Anyway, you have, you have realized now and you want to have total trust and complete faith, complete trust in the Lord, wherever you are, where are you? Raise up that hand and then stand up. Stand up, stand up, stand up for Jesus and say, Lord, I belong to you now. Forever, forever, I belong to you. And I throw the things of the past, I throw them away and I come to you and I plead for your mercy, I plead for your forgiveness, here am I, Lord, and the Lord himself, the Lord himself will have a favor on you and will transform your life even tonight. Stand up. We're going to pray now. As you're giving your life and you're handing over your life unto the Lord, this is your hour, this same moment, this same hour. The forgiveness of the Lord is coming. We're going to pray now. Father, in the name of Jesus, you have said, Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And I pray all these who have come now and they worship you and they call you Lord and they hand over all their lives unto you. Forgive them in Jesus' name. Set them free in Jesus' name. Save them in Jesus' name. And Lord, we know you are able to save to the uttermost. I pray that the salvation will be permanent. New life will be permanent. And a new way of using the tongue to the glory of God will be permanent in Jesus' name. Let the joy of salvation come to them. And let the peace that comes in salvation come to them right now. Confirm your salvation, your forgiveness, your freedom, your redemption in their lives, in their hearts right now. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Keep on standing, our counselors are there, and they'll give you the little slip there. Feel that slip so we can have good information concerning you. And then after this counseling will be the time of receiving your healing, your deliverance, your miracle. I call on our state pastor to help us with the counseling period. Counselors, let's spread to the midst of the congregation, spread right to the back. The greatest thing that could happen to a human being is what is happening now. Angels are rejoicing, and reasonable people are rejoicing. And people that know the value of eternity, they are rejoicing. God is adding souls to his kingdom, not to the local church, but to his kingdom. I want you to spread all over. Give them the forms. Fill the forms clearly. Write in capital letters. Write their names clearly. If you can feel, fill it correctly with your correct name, the name you are well known. And fill that form in and write your phone number, 11 digits. Describe your address. And let us see the description clearly. If you like, you could put the name of somebody that knows you here. Put it clearly. Those online, connect with Christ through the number that is on the screen there. Plus two three four nine one five four 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 nine 
two six three plus two three four nine one five four 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 nine two six three. You can send SMS with your name, with your number, your WhatsApp number, and your address. We will get in touch with you. Those listening through the television, you can do the same thing. You are listening over the radio, you can do the same thing. Please, counselors, remember there are people far to the back. And there are people at the car park, at the, on the fields there, to my right-hand side. There are people in the children's hall there. Please do it correctly. To the youth hall by my left-hand side, there are people there also. Right behind the choir, all over. Get to the gate, outside the gate. Get there, take their information correctly. Those who cannot write, write for them. Names are being written in the book of life. Angels are rejoicing. The devil is losing people. Heaven is being populated. Let every soul rejoice at this time. Rejoice for what God is doing. The greatest miracle is the miracle of salvation. Anywhere you are listening... And God is touching your life, or God has touched your life at this time. Please fill the form online and submit. You will see the link there. Click it and fill it. We will get back to you. We will help you to grow up in Christ. Those who are giving their lives to Christ, there is a package that they are giving to you there. That envelope is rich. Inside it, you have free book. Free book by our Father in the Lord, Pastor Dr. W.F. Komui. Read that book over and over again. Free for you. There is a tract there. There's a special letter from our Father in the Lord inviting you to a lunch hour with Christ. And it will hold tomorrow by 3 p.m. 3 p.m. tomorrow, you will be here. And all those that gave their lives to Christ right from the first day of the crusade, you will be here to have the lunch hour with Christ tomorrow by 3 p.m. Counselors, do it fast. Remember, the man of God will soon come up again to pray the miracle prayer. The miracle prayer tonight. I believe you are waiting and I believe you are expecting. Why not be telling God at this time that this is my request. I will not go back the same. I will not go back with my mountain. I will not go back with this load. I will not go back with my, with, my, with my sickness. I will not go back with my oppression. Remember, tonight is a night of total liberation. Total liberation. Counselors, when they fill it, check the form to ensure that they are correctly filled. Don't just collect without checking. Check it and ensure they are correctly filled. The phone numbers are correct. The addresses are well described. And don't leave anybody out. Every soul is important. All of them, they are important. And those who are not counseling, those who are not being counseled, be talking to God at this time. This is the time you hold on to God that can never lie. This is the time you claim the promises of God that can never lie. And you believe it, tonight you will have it. You will receive it in Jesus' name. And patiently wait to receive the miracle prayer. Patiently wait to hear the testimonies that will be coming up here tonight. 
Counselors, if you are true, can you wave your hand at me? If you are true from your segment, wave, off, wave your hand at me. Thank you very much. If you are true to the back, wave your hand. You are true to my left, wave your hand at me. And if you are done to my right, wave your hand and let us see. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And when you are done, submit your form to your supervisor in that particular segment. Don't carry the form away. Don't go home with the form. Submit to your supervisor who will take it to the right place. I believe you are getting ready. You are getting ready for outpouring. I told you, the first night was great. Yesterday was greater. And today will still be greater than yesterday. Be telling God at this time, Oh Lord, remember me. I need your touch. I need your touch. The touch of God is for everyone tonight. Great and small. The touch of God is for everyone tonight. Man and woman, boy and girl. The touch of God is for you. You will go home with your testimony. Be pouring your heart unto God at this time. You will go home with your testimony. Counselors, if you are done, submit your form to your supervisor and don't come back. Remain there because you are going to bring the people that God will touch. Just remain there. If you see a lame man near your side, don't leave him, don't leave her. Stand there by his side so that when the miracle happens, when the incredible happens, you bring the person out. There is joy here tonight. Tonight is a night of jubilation. I say tonight is a night of jubilation. Tonight is a night of jubilation. Very soon, the man of God is coming up to release the miracle prayer. Round up very quickly. Round up quickly. Round up quickly. I invite our Father in the Lord, the servant of God, to release the miracle prayer and set us free. Praise the Lord. Lord. I said praise the Lord. Liberation. Yeah. Healing. Yeah. Deliverance. Yeah. Miracle. Upon you tonight there in Jesus' name. Yeah. Your blind eyes will open. Yeah. So after the final prayer, you'll not just shut your eyes, you'll open your eyes, you look around, and behold, you will see. Yeah. And then if you brought anybody there for dumb, after the final prayer, you speak to them, you will test them. They will hear you. Yeah. And then you pronounce what simple words for them. They repeat those words. Yeah. And anybody lame, paralyzed there, after the final prayer, give them a helping hand. They rise up, they will walk. Yeah. If one leg is shorter than the other, you can sit down on the ground and stretch those legs and you see that that leg one leg is shorter than the other and then after the final prayer those two legs will be equal yeah. anything swollen in your body just lay your hand there everything uh, will vanish away yeah. every miracle you need tonight is available from christ yeah. and as we look up to christ the supernatural liberator it will liberate you. Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. You raise up one hand. You lay the other hand upon yourself. Miracle. Yeah. Miracle. Yeah. Healing. Yeah. It's just tonight. Yeah. Father, we well, thank you tonight and bless your name. We know you can never fail. You're not a man that you will lie. Neither the son of man to change your mind or to repent. What you have said you will do, you will do. And this moment, do it for your people in Jesus' name. 
anywhere there's disease, I pray your mighty touch, supernatural touch, will come in and take all that disease away in Jesus' name. I pray that those who have skin disease and leprosy, they will be cleansed now. Heal them. Manifest your power in Jesus' name. Those who have things walking about in their body, I command those things come out in Jesus' name. Insanity, madness, evil spirit tormenting the brain or the head, come out in Jesus' name. And I pray, Lord, you release your power to them right now, and insanity will vanish away. Anything swollen in the body like goiter, like hunchback, like swollen tummy, like ania, like elephantiasis in the legs, or any swelling, I pray you touch them now. Remove all the swelling out of their body in Jesus' name. I pray for those who are blind. I pray that you touch their blind eyes now. Blind eyes, receive your sight. Open those eyes and begin to see in Jesus' name. Those who are deaf, I pray that you get healed now and sound will enter into those ears in Jesus' name. Dumb tongues, speak out in Jesus' name. And those who are lame, those who are broken bones, the power of God touches you now. Rise up. Receive strength. And all arthritis vanish away. Those who have one leg shorter than the other, that short, short leg, grow out now in Jesus' name. With that hand, be stretched out and be made whole in Jesus' name. The miracle you need, the transformation you need, the healing you need be performed in your body right now. Lord, those who need creative miracle, do it for them. Lungs, kidney, liver, any part of the body, touch them with a miracle touch. Receive your healing right now. Lord, we thank you it is done. Lord, it is done. There will be manifestation everywhere right now. In Jesus' name I pray. It is done. It is done. It